What do you do when you and your best bud have a massive hater? Defend the galaxy, of course. At least that's what Wanda and Sylvia do in Disney XD's animated series, Wanda Over Yonder. They travel planet to planet to fend off Lord Hater and keep him from conquering the universe. Hi, I'm JD with Channel Frederator, and we're here to spew all the optimistic details of this space adventure. So get your steeds and fight pose ready, cause haters gonna hate. Oh, and also, cause this is 107 facts about Wanda Over Yonder. Let's get started. <laughs> Number one, Wander Over Yonder was created by Craig McCracken, who is also behind the Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. This is extremely apparent in all three shows' animation styles, in which characters have similar designs featuring thick outlines and bright colors. Number two, Craig McCracken's first job in animation was working as an art director. He was on the creative staff of the now wonderfully nostalgic Two Stupid Dogs. Number three, Craig McCracken worked with Cartoon Network for 17 years before making the transition to Disney. Wander Over Yonder is the first show he worked on for Disney, where he was given near full creative freedom. Number four, in a way, cartoons like Wander Over Yonder, Power Puff Girls and My Life as a Teenage Robot are all connected. Craig McCracken, Gendy Tartakovsky, and Rob Renzetti were roommates after college. This, combined with the tropes of that era of cartooning, might explain why their work has a similar feel. Number five, McCracken's favorite cartoon as a kid, and one of the minor influences behind Wander Over Yonder, was Underdog. Cartoons such as that and Mickey Mouse were influences on the design for the show due to the importance of the iconography. Number six, Wander Over Yonder has something else in common with McCracken's other shows. Like the others, it has won an Annie Award for Best Animated Television Broadcast Production for Children. Number seven, Wander Over Yonder was created around Wander's character rather than a concept of a spacefaring cartoon. McCracken said that the character of Wander came before any overarching ideas. He wanted the show to be about Wander with plots and ideas as secondary. Number eight, McCracken wanted to make a character that was eternally optimistic because he was too tired of the dark, brooding, mean, or cynical character archetypes that are saturating the media. Number nine, McCracken's character was originally a random doodle that he kept coming back to during his time working on Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. He didn't know what to do with the doodle at the time, but enjoyed playing with the character's design. The original sketches of Wander had him with shaggier fur, a different hat, and a walking stick. Number 10. Animator Lauren Faust, Craig McCracken's wife and showrunner of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, is a fellow producer on the show. She's written several episodes and even a song for the show, Best Friends Forever, for the episode The Buddies. Number 11. The show was based, to a minor degree, on Looney Tunes. McCracken has specifically noted that he and his team wanted to return to the roots of animation for Wander Over Yonder by using slapstick, fast-paced humor. Number 12. It takes one year and three months to complete an episode of Wander Over Yonder. This is because of the many teams that the show goes through. Writers, producers, animators, editors, cast members, directors, production team, storyboarders, and designers. Number 13. That being said, it takes the creative team two days to come up with just the story for any given episode. McCracken has said that the hashing out of the story takes so long because each episode has to be a specific tone, which must be determined before anything is animated. Number 14. There are 60 people on the US creative team for Wander Over Yonder. McCracken said that when he was developing the show, something was missing from the process, which he soon realized was a crew of collaborators. Number 15. The animation of the show is not handled by Disney, it's handled by Mercury Filmworks. They're based in Canada and have worked with Disney on numerous projects. Number 16. Wander Over Yonder was made in 11 minute segments due to network demands and fan habits. According to McCracken, serialized cartoons do not rate as high in repeats as standalone cartoons do, and he initially wanted to make Wander in a longer, more interconnected format, but was told no. However, he was allowed to add some elements of this depth in the second season. Number 17. Wander Over Yonder, for the first season, has somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 storyboard panels. This is due to the fact that digital animators and traditional animators work on the show, and everyone is constantly adding more and more new poses to the panels to make the jokes work better. Number 18. The second season has a heavier emphasis on continuity than the first. On his blog, McCracken has outlined the different functions that 11 minute single episodes serve for the overall story versus the 22 minute two parters, even saying that the 22s can be played like a movie. Number 19. Wander Over Yonder is animated using the program Toon Boom Harmony. The process mixes finished drawings and computer animations that digitally render pieces to make it all look like hand drawn illustrations. Number 20. The settings and designs for the show are largely inspired by the sci fi genre and have a blacklight esque feel to them. McCracken said that he was trying to create a science fiction aura that feels pre-Star Wars. His inspirations include Terry Gilliam's animation and old sci-fi novel covers. The final artistic design for the show was aptly dubbed Lava Lamp Aesthetic. Number 21. Another inspiration for the show's unique aesthetic was the Muppets. McCracken was inspired by the simplicity of Henson's puppetry and wanted to incorporate those designs into his characters for the show. Number 22. Yet another inspiration for the show's style is a Croatian TV show called Professor Balthazar. McCracken said that he and the art director Alex Kerwan discovered the show two years prior and have used it as a touchstone for Wander Over Yonder's animation particularly for Lord Hater's appearance. Number 23, the art style of the show, particularly for the characters, has been dubbed Lava Theory. In a how-to guide from the show's art director, Alex Kerwan, he notes that the characters should have a gloopy feel and should naturally flow when they move, rather than being rigid or stiff. Number 24, the worlds from Wander Over Yonder are not from our universe. McCracken has said that the surrealism and brightness of the planets that Wander visits are not earthbound and are inspired by media like the Yellow Submarine. Number 25, Wander Over Yonder's sci-fi inspirations didn't just stay as inspirations. There's shoutouts to Star Wars in many episodes 
episodes. And the season one episode, The Pet, is an 11 minute homage to Ridley Scott's 70s thriller, Alien. Number 26. Most of Wander Over Yonder's music was created by a New York City duo called the Two Man Gentleman Band. The group, consisting of a string bass player and a banjo player, got their start in the New York City subways and have since released seven albums. Their silly, earwormy songs captured the essence of the show perfectly. Number 27. The show uses a wide variety of musical instruments and styles, from kazoos to banjos to blown over water jugs. Those kinds of sounds help give the show its goofiness. But for more serious episodes, sounds like pianos, bagpipes, and choirs are used to provide a bit of gravity. Number 28. The highly varied environments of the show mean that they, each episode has a different color palette, which is called a color script in production. This also carries over to the characters, who get a new color palette to match that of the setting. The Stray, for example, uses an array of teal, purple, magenta, and gray, while The Liar uses yellow, gray, and orange. Number 29. The reason why Commander Peepers and any other watchdogs are different in colors in certain scenes is because of Hater's ship. Typically their bodies are black, but if they were black inside of the ship, they wouldn't show up properly. So the creative team makes them purple for those scenes. Number 30. Comic book writer and artist Noel Stevenson became part of the writing team for season 2. Stevenson is most famous for her creation of the webcomic Nimona and the comic book series Lumberjanes. Her writing style and brand of humor mesh fantastically with the out there humor of Wander Over Yonder. Number 31. Season 1 was supposed to be about Sylvia and Wander learn to like each other, but Disney nixed the idea. According to McCracken, the higher ups at Disney wanted the two of them to be friends from the start for the ease of storytelling. Number 32. Lord Eater's motions and dancings during the song You're the Greatest in the episode My Fair Haiti were inspired by Michelle Pfeiffer. Specifically, Lord Hater's villainous singing at the piano was a take from Pfeiffer's vampy role in The Fabulous Baker Boys. Number 33. The season 2 episode The Wanders was written in part by a kid. A young fan named Charlie was inspired by the show and wrote up an original idea for the episode. His father sent in the idea to the Wander Over Yonder creative team and Charlie was able to help with the episode's production. Number 34. The menacing theme song for Dominator was inspired in part by the sound of walking AT-ATs from Star Wars. For inspiration, McCracken sent Wander Over Yonder composer Andy Bean an hour-long YouTube video of the sound of AT-AT -AT walking. The song and the sound have lots in common, including a rather industrial sounding bass. Number 35. The original ending tag for The Gift was longer than the one that was actually aired. Disney Channel allows 30 second ending tags, while Disney XD only allows 15 seconds. The 30 second ending tag features Wander stealthily sliding a gift onto Tim's bed and giving him a kiss on the forehead before darting away. Number 36. The episode The Liar was inspired by a real life news story. After watching an interview on ABC with a banker who saved a group of ducklings from a ledge, McCracken took the concept and added lava to up the stakes, and presto, an episode of Wander Over Yonder was born. Number 37. Almost all the episode's titles follow a very particular naming convention. The insert noun related to the plot here, this has only been broken in one episode, which was season 2's My Fair Haiti. That title is a reference to the famous musical My Fair Lady, a pun that, according to the show's creator, was too good to pass up. Number 38. Season 2's The Cartoon is covered in dog hair. The episode was storyboarded by Ben Ballesteri, who sadly deceased dog Beaker shed ridiculous amounts of hair. His fur has been scattered across the world by Ballesteri and his wife, and even made its way onto one of the background sets of the cartoon. Number 39. Craig McCracken has joked about making an episode called The Patience. This is a reference to Wander Over Yonder's fandoms and patience when waiting for new episodes. Number 40. The version of Lord Hater featured in the H-A-T-E-R-V commercial looks different from the animated Lord Hater because of legal restrictions. Cartoon Hater is top heavy but not buff. The version made by Stupid Buddy looks jacked because FCC rules state that it couldn't look like an actual toy that could be made. Number 41. Wander was going to be significantly older than the version that we see in the show. According to old storyboards and designs, Wander had a much rougher and scragglier look to him. He had a long beard and a walking stick, evoking images reminiscent of similar Wanderer Gandalf the Grey from Lord of the Rings. Number 42. Wanderer was originally inspired by underground comics from the 1960s and hippie greeting card artwork from the 1970s. On his blog, McCracken has revealed old artwork of Wanderer from 2003 that shows him with a body-sized beard reminiscent of Cousin It from the Adams Family and rainbow striped socks. However, the floppy green hat was already present. Number 43. Wanderer's age is still ambiguous. He certainly looks ageless and he could very well be a thousand years old. On Craig McCracken and Tumblr, he said that Wander might not actually be all that old though, especially because he's worn a fake beard before to imitate aging. Number 44. No one really knows what Wanderer actually is. The fandom calls him a furry space nomad, and when asked in an interview about it, Jack McBrayer joked that Wanderer is an intergalactic space nomad with a green cowboy hat. Number 45. Wander was designed in part to be easily drawn. In an interview with Geek Dad, Craig McCracken noted that he likes characters that kids can draw, which informed the appearance of the Powerpuff Girls, Blue, and now Wander. Number 46. Sylvia and Wander were created to be opposites. When discussed in the creation of Sylvia, Craig McCracken noted that the idea for her came out of the desire to give Wander a companion that contrasted it by being confrontational and pragmatic. Number 47. From a design standpoint, Sylvia and Wander are also designed to complement each other. Wander is top heavy, while Sylvia is bottom heavy, and they fit together like a yin yang symbol. Artists on the show are specifically advised to find instances where they can hug or be placed close together to show this. Even their colors, orange and blue, are complementary. Number 48. The name of Sylvia's species is the Zbornax. The name sounds pretty alien and made up, but it's actually a reference to the 
character of Dorothy Zbornak from the popular 80s sitcom The Golden Girls. Dorothy was named after the show's stage manager, Kent Zbornak. Number 49. The cone on top of Sylvia's head changes shape according to her emotions. According to the art style guide created by art director Alex Kerwan, the cone emotes as she does, and should be drawn in specific ways to reflect that. Number 50. While Sylvia's unsavory past seemed a bit out of the blue, there's actually quite a bit of foreshadowing for it in the earlier episodes. Before the writer, Sylvia was shown as an expert on stealth and firearms, and also knows how to hotwire a ship. Number 51. Sylvia knows about mixed martial arts. Voice actress April Winchell joked that it was one of her defining attributes, in addition to walking on two legs. Number 52. April Winchell was inspired more by Sylvia's expressions than by her appearance. In an interview with Mingle Media, Winchell said that she was able to see pictures of her character before acting, and that the crossed arms and ready stance of Sylvia inspired her vocal characterization. Number 53. Like Jack McBriar, April Winchell has also voiced Disney characters before. She's best known for her roles as Miss Finster on Recess, and especially Claire Bell Cow on Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Number 54. Wander's shoes are extremely similar to those worn by Will, the one-armed basketball-playing imaginary friend in Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Well, not exactly the same. Both characters wear comparable Converse-like sneakers. Number 55. On that note, so are Lord Hader's shoes. In fact, his sneakers are exactly the same as Wilton Wander's. Number 56. Lord Hader was inspired by the legendary Flash Gordon movie from the 80s, directed by Dino De Laurentiis. This campy, over-the-top flavor of the film was a big inspiration for the villain, especially because it had fun with its bad guys, instead of making them one-dimensionally evil. Number 57. Lord Hader and Wander did not originally exist in the same universe. Craig McCracken has said that he created the two characters separately, and that early conceptualizations of Lord Hader were younger and scrawnier than the villain in Wander Over Yonder. Once he realized that they would contrast each other well, he inserted Hader into the show. Number 58. Lord Hader's cloak design is meant to look like dripping blood. This fits in with the villainous role of the character, when contrasted with the eternally kind Wander. Number 59. The design of Lord Hader's cloak is not entirely symmetrical. Art director Alex Kerwan has specified that the dripping blood design on Hader's body should be somewhat symmetrical, but not tight and perfect. Number 60. Lord Hader's ship is based off the cartoon Fantastic Planet. The 1973 cartoon was animated by Terry Gilliam and was psychedelic and strange. 61. McCracken has noted that Lord Hader is kind of the protagonist of the show. According to him, Hader has the most to learn and most room to grow, especially compared to the more mature Wander, who seems to have everything figured out already. Number 62. Lord Hader has a ton of different names, according to each country. He's known as General No Heart in France, Lord Phobia in Spain, Sir Hader in Japanese, Lord Terror in Italy, Lord Hothead in Dutch, Mr. Sinister in Russia, and, best of all, Unpleasant in Romania. Other characters characters have nicknamed him Bonehead, Bone Daddy, and Haiti. Number 63. Wander also has more than one name. In the alternate time-traveled universe in The Waste of Time, Sylvia and Wander witness alternate Wander being referred to as Tumbleweed. It's also implied in The Wanders that Wander isn't his real name. Number 64. Some of the characters have trademarked favorite foods. Wander and Lord Hader like triple pickle cream pie, while Sylvia loves jellyfish pie. Number 65. Wander, Sylvia, and Lord Hader are based off specific items. These items inform their shape and movement. According to the show's art director, Wander is buoyant like a balloon. Sylvia is ground like a sack of flour, and Hader is daunting and top-heavy, like a boxing glove. Number 66. Sylvia and Lord Hader are the same height, but looking at a height chart drawn by art director Alex Kerwan, it's clear that the two of them are about the same size, even if Lord Hader's hat might be adding a few extra inches. Number 67. Lord Dominator was introduced to the show because of Lord Hader. After Lord Hader was revealed to be more of a sympathetic, goofy character than a real threat, the more imposing and wicked Dominator was created to shake things up for the main cast. Number 68. Lord Dominator has two different voice actors. Her masked version, tall, imposing, and scary, is voiced by longtime voice actor Fred Tedis Short, while her unmasked version is played by Noel Wells. Number 69. Fred bases his performance of the masked version of Lord Dominator on Noel Wells' performance of the unmasked Dominator. Rather than performing separately or in a vacuum, Wells reads every one of Dominator's lines, and then Tedis Short imitates her nuances and dubs over the same lines for masked Dominator to make sure it matches the style. Number 70. Fittingly, Dominator doesn't see Wander, Sylvia, Lord Hater, and Peepers as real threats to her powers. They're more like mild annoyances or flies to be swatted away. According to McCracken, Wander and the gang are play things to be tossed around by her, like a cat playing with a mouse. Number 71. Dominator was created to be an evil mirror of all the other characters. McCracken said that she is stronger than Sylvia, greater than Hater, and as evil as Wander is good. Number 72. The character of Wander is voiced by Jack McBrayer, and this is not his first time voicing an animated role. McBrayer voiced a similar spunky and short character in Disney's Wreck-It Ralph, Fix-It Felix. Like McBrayer, the characters share an optimistic outlook on life. Number 73. Speaking of Jack McBrayer, the actor is a big fan of McCracken's other work. McCracken claimed in an interview that McBrayer's love of Foster's Home for imaginary friends was what drew him to the project. The creator and actor did lunch together, along with fellow animator Lauren Faust, and they immediately found the real-life Wander. Number 74. Ryder and Wander have been on screen together before. Their voice actors, Will Arnett and Jack McBrayer, were co-stars on the hit NBC show 30 Rock. Number 75. James Marsden, best known as Cyclops in the X-Men franchise, has been a guest star in Wander Over Yonder. The show has 
plenty of high-profile guest stars, and Morrison enters the club providing the voice of the heroic Brad Starlight. Number 76. Another guest star on Wander Every Hunter was John Hamm, most famous for playing advertising executive Don Draper in AMC's Mad Men. Here, he portrays cartoon Lord Hater in the episode The Cartoon. Number 77. Weird Al has played an evil singing banana. The character was named Mischievous Dr. Screwball Jones, which is truly an incredible name, and was a villain from Wander's past. Number 78. And blessedly, the great Jennifer Hale also had a guest role on Wander Over Yonder. She played the part of Princess Demura. Number 79. Tom Kenny voices Commander Peepers, but he's also famous for playing another well-known cartoon character, SpongeBob SquarePants. His voice is highly recognizable as the Yellow Sponge, but he's something of a vocal chameleon. He voices so many side characters in Wander Over Yonder that it's hard to know if it's actually him. Number 80. Tom Kenny and Craig McCracken have worked together before, which isn't all that surprising since Kenny is such a prolific voice actor. He voiced the mayor of Townsville in The Powerpuff Girls. Number 81. The members of the Wander Over Yonder group, Two Man Gentleman Band, Andy Bean and Fuller Condon, guest star in the season 2 episode The Waste of Time. They play the part of Time Machine inventors Orville and Wilmer Wright, and I don't need to tell you that the names are a pun on airplane pioneers Orville and Wilbur Wright. Number 82. All of the writers have had cameos on the show. Specifically, McCracken, Noel Stevenson, Todd Gazy, Amy J. Higgins, and Frank and Gomez all appeared in the season 2 episodes The Legend and The Bad Neighbors. Number 83. Major Threat is an accidental Jeff Bridges reference. A fan of the show noticed the similarities between the Wander Over Yonder villain and the dude from The Big Lebowski, and posted on their blog about it. Craig McCracken affirmed the resemblance in response, and expressed his sadness over not purposely making a Lebowski reference. Number 84. Even though it happened in an alternate timeline, Sylvia was a bounty hunter, and she and Wander met because of it. McCracken has confirmed that what's shown in The Waste of Time is true, and that Wander eventually turns Sylvia over to his side with his eternal optimism. Number 85. Craig McCracken is highly involved with his fans. He has a Tumblr and Twitter account, where he goes by Crack McCracken and frequently answers fan questions. A particular note is the fact that a fan tweeted a screenshot from an episode where it appeared that Sylvia had a second phantom head, and Craig McCracken explained that it was due to an animation technique. Number 86. There was a fan theory floating around that a monkey who briefly appeared in Season 2 was actually Lord Hater. However, story editor Frank Angones has debunked this, saying that Hater Chimp is actually an unused character named Monkey Boy that was made for a hypothetical Season 3. Number 87. If you look closely at Sylvia's blanket, the strings on it spell out the letters CMCC. This undoubtedly stands for Craig McCracken. Number 88. Within the many references hidden in Wonder Over Yonder, there's also a shout out to Rosie the Riveter. The pose and polka dotted bandana, made famous by the World War II icon, is imitated by Sylvia in the episode The Ball. Number 89. There was almost a Star Wars joke in Season 2's A Waste of Time. According to Frank Angones, Orbal Wright was going to say of the time machine, this is my newest invention, the Orbal Transporter. We wanted to call them Skywalkers, but we couldn't for legal reasons. That joke, obviously, was cut for legal reasons. Number 90. Wonder Over Yonder and Gravity Falls did a crossover, kind of. In the episode The Cartoon, the voice cast of Gravity Falls, including creator Alex Hirsch, lent their voices to characters in Wander Over Yonder. Number 91. The individual episodes of the show were going to have posters dedicated to them, representing what each plot was going to be about. According to McCracken, he had wanted to create posters for the episodes, but working on the actual show was much more important. However, a poster does exist in The Black Cube and can be found on his blog. Number 92. April Winchell's favorite aspect of the show is its positivity. She said that because comedy is often oriented towards mockery, it can be hard to be funny and optimistic, and she loves that the show accomplishes this. Number 93. Jeff McBrayer and April Winchell's favorite episode is The Toddler. The episode involves Wander and Sylvia finding a giant toddler in a shopping mall and having to return him to his parents. It's their favorites because of the silliness. Number 94. A member of the fandom has created a life-size Lord Hater plush. It's completely accurate to the show and is nearly six feet tall. Craig McCracken reposted the truly awesome photos of the fan's creation and expressed his appreciation for it. Number 95. Fans of the show make all kinds of art and products to express their devotion, including graffiti. In Copenhagen, Denmark, there's a beautiful bit of street art that depicts Commander Peepers and another watchdog. Number 96. In Wander Over Yonder, there's a reference to the popular internet meme video of He-Man singing along to the 1993 song What's Up. There's a fully animated clip of Lord Hater and Wander dancing and singing in a similar way to the meme at the end of Season 2's episode, The Cartoon. McCracken has highlighted the clip on his blog, and it's 15 seconds of your time well spent. Number 97. The Wander Over Yonder shorts that aired as a prelude to Season 2 form a single 11-minute episode. While they were released as separate, standalone cartoons, they have a coherent story when viewed in chronological order. Number 98. There is content for Wander Over Yonder that takes place before the show. McCracken was originally going to release a Wander-centric graphic novel that covered his and Sylvia's misadventures before the show's timeline, but then he began working with Disney to make the cartoon, and the graphic novel was shelved. Number 99. While Sylvia is repeatedly opening and closing a door in the Season 2 episode, The Void, you can see tons of pictures put there by the creative team. These include images of Wander and Sylvia's old designs, the photos of Craig McCracken, Jack McBrayer, and the two-man gentleman band. This freeze-frame bonus also has a message from McCracken thanking the fans for taking the time to catch all the door images. Number 100. Fans can own Lord Hater's awesome van from the Season 2 episode, The Funk. Well, not a fully sized one, but you can buy a beautiful paper craft of the killer car that's an exact copy of the van featured in the show. Number 101. Even though it's a fan term, the phrase Star Nomad is used to describe Wander in the show. The phrase is spoken in Season 2's The Emergency Fronfract, and McCracken has said that 
that it was put in as a nod to the fans. Plus, he really likes it. Number 102, Lord Hader's ship was designed to parallel his own design and to look like a nightmare pinball machine, filled with darkness and neons as a stark contrast to Wander's bright and whimsical world. Number 103, Lord Hader was never really supposed to be a villain. He was designed to be goofy and insecure, and while he starts off the show acting menacing and scary, viewers quickly see that he's really more of a dork. Number 104, Keith Ferguson, the voice of Lord Hader, has worked with Craig McCracken before. He played the part of Blue in Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Number 105, Season 2's My Fair Haiti was inspired by other Disney musicals, specifically Mary Poppins in The Jungle Book. Number 106, in only two seasons, Wander Over Yonder has been nominated for eight Annie Awards, two in 2014 and six in 2016. It won two for Outstanding Achievement in Character Animation and Outstanding Achievement in Character Design. The show was also nominated for an Emmy in 2015 for the episode The Gift 2, The Giffening. Despite all these achievements, Wander Over Yonder ended after two seasons. No! Number 107, Bear McCracken has noted that the episode he takes the most pride in is season two's The Void. In fact, on Twitter, he said it was one of his favorite cartoons from his entire career. Thanks for watching 107 Facts About Wander Over Yonder. Which episode is your favorite? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. We have new videos dropping every week, so let us know which animated film or TV show you want us to cover next. If you like getting more from your cartoons, subscribe to Channel Fred Ritter, your cartoon central on the internet.